As a Notion consultant, after consulting more than 60 companies, I have found one thing that has been super useful for all of them, which is to do an audit before starting to do anything else in their Notion systems. And this is exactly what I'm going to share with you in this video. What do I look for when I'm auditing another business's Notion system? Because my purpose is that you will be able to do the same for your system so you can understand what is broken and therefore you can fix it. Cool, so to do this audit, I'm gonna walk you through the main parts that every task and project management system consists on. And the way that we are gonna audit each of the parts is gonna be through a set of questions, which by the way, you will be able to find in the description of the video as a Notion template, so you can answer them there. Cool, so the first part of every system is the capturing. So it is clear, a system is nothing without data in it. So this part of the system is how we are gonna be entering data inside of the system. And whenever capturing is not working, the feeling that we get is that we feel a little bit disorganized and scattered. So here are some questions to audit your capturing system. Do you know where to store your tasks, ideas, notes, and resources? This is important because you shouldn't be thinking on where to store each of them whenever they come up. This should have a very defined process and it should always be the same. Next, are you capturing information in more than one place? And if yes, why? This mainly highlights the importance of having the least number of places where we can capture information. If there is more than one place where we capture the same type of information, whenever we get that new, I don't know, idea for a task or whatever, we're gonna wonder where to store it. And one, we're gonna have a lot of friction because yes, this will paralyze us. And second, if every time we store it in a different place, there are very high chances that the next time that we're gonna need that piece of information, we are not gonna find it. And lastly, how quickly can you go from thought to capture? To be truth, the time that we can hold a thought is quite limited. So for example, how many times has it happened that you are on a shower, you have a thought of something, I don't know, super cool, a project, whatever, and then you get out of the shower and you forgot about it. So the longer the time you need from going from thought to capture, the higher the chances that you are gonna forget that thing. So here you may want to assess in which context normally you are whenever you have a new idea or something to capture. If you are always on the go, maybe you should optimize for having a mobile uh, way to capture thoughts. Or if you are mostly in Zoom meetings, so maybe you, you need a, a keyboard shortcut that will allow you to input information into your system. Cool, so the next part of the system, once we have captured the information, will be the scheduling. Remember that here we are talking about task and project management, so those tasks should be scheduled. So this is the next part of the process. And whenever this part of the system is not working, we will feel delayed and overwhelmed. And here are some questions that may help you audit this part of your system. Do you overschedule your weeks because you don't take into account your meetings? By the way, this is a very common issue. Not accounting for the time that we are in meetings will lead us to overscheduling. And therefore, at the end of the week, we will feel as if we haven't accomplished anything, when probably in reality, it's not that true, but this is how we feel. And which for me is the most important question. Do you always know what you need to get done as soon as you start your work? To me, there is nothing worse than waking up and not knowing what to do. Why? Because if that is what happens, then you probably will end up scheduling your day right then and there. And this will lead you to don't have a grand scheme vision of, of things that are happening in your business, and you will just have the day-to-day -day vision. And of course, this will affect your focus. Then the next part of the system is the executing. So this is basically doing what we have captured and then scheduled. If this part of the system is not working, we will feel overwhelmed and stressed because we will always have the feeling that there are things that needs to get done, but we cannot really handle them. So here are the questions. Do you know where you're at regarding your projects and what's left to do? Being able to see what are the next steps for each of your projects will certainly reduce the overwhelm that we feel about them. And we will get this feeling that at least, even if things are not done, but at least they are under control. Do you mark your tasks as complete whenever you complete them? Because this will help to keep your backlog of tasks always up to date. Because I don't know about you, but there is nothing worse than seeing your backlog of tasks, I don't know, 60 tasks, and to then realize, oh, I have done this one. Oh, I have done that one. So that your backlog is not really up to date. And if you tend to forget about doing this, I mean, it is not the end of the world, but it is probably because whenever you are finishing your tasks, you don't have your task list or a way to complete your tasks at hand. So this has a very easy fix. It's another contextual view that we can create in Notion, for example. And lastly, and most important, do some of the tasks 
fall through the cracks and get forgotten, this to me will be the most clear indicator that something is very wrong with the system. And this is the one that can have the biggest negative impact in your business. If things get forgotten, identify what is happening, what got missed, and fix it with your workflows, which we are gonna see at the end of the video. After executing, we have review and planning. This is the part of the process that take a look at the past to see how we've done and at the future to plan what needs to get done. Whenever this part of the system is not working, we may feel unaware because we will have this feeling that we don't really have things under control. We don't really know what's going on and burnt out because we will always be working in the business instead of on it. We will not have any perspective. So basically, do you have a way to review your projects and tasks? This is something that I do personally every week and it helps me to get that perspective. When was the last time that you reviewed your task backlog? Our backlogs can become the place where everything goes to get forgotten. So then what's the point on capturing them? So if we don't have the habit to review it, this is what's going to happen. Could you easily tell which are the projects you are focusing on this month, this quarter and this year? Again, talk about perspective. If we can easily do this, we will know where our business is going to be at least in one year, more or less. Okay, things change, but at least we will have the path. And then most important of all, do you have the perspective of where your business is going? Because if we are always in do mode, in the execution part, just doing the thing, we won't really have the time nor the perspective to understand if these things that we are doing, if they're actually bringing us to where we want to go or where we want our business to go. And finally, we have the workflows. This is basically what is helping everything else work perfectly. That's why I placed it here with this square, taking everything in. If we don't have good workflows, we may feel inefficient because you may be reinventing the wheel for every new task that comes or for every project that comes. And this structure, because due to the lack of workflows, you may lose focus while doing a certain task or while doing like some admin work. Because if you don't have a workflow to guide you, every time you may do it differently, which in the end, it will also increase the chances that you get unfocused because when something is difficult to do, we tend to unfocus and try to do something else. So yes, workflows also help with making things much easier. And here are some questions. Do you have to remember how to do a task you do often and sometimes you miss something? This could be a tiny or a huge time waster, depending on the task that you need to do. Do things fall through the cracks because they weren't tagged or organized properly and got out of sight? Because if we like workflows and organization, we may be missing out on things simply because they just don't resurface where we have set them to resurface. How easy is it to find the information that you need to get your work done? And here I'm talking about guides, about SOPs, about how to support templates, logins, and so on. And finally, how many of the things that you do often you think could be automated? And here I'm talking about client onboarding, invoicing, task creation whenever a project reaches a certain state, finance tracking, like all of this. Regarding workflows, there is good and bad news. The good news is that typically workflows are easily fixed, but the bad thing is that it is hard to see that we have a workflow problem because we tend to take things for granted that this is how things are. But probably <laughs> there are some workflow problems that we are not really seeing. Okay, so with all these questions, I hope that now you know where your business system stands. And now let me give you some unsolicited words of advice. Systems should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. Every time that I'm consulting a client and the client wants to even add one property to one database, if to me it is not very clear why he wants to do it, I'm gonna ask why. And unless he tells me like a real reason why this new property is gonna be helpful, we're not gonna include it because this increases the maintenance work of that property, the complexity of the system, and if we don't have an ROI, a return on investment, for increasing the complexity of the system, we are not gonna include it. And the second piece of advice, pay attention to your friction points, because self-awareness is super important when we are testing our systems. Because you shouldn't force yourself into a system. Because this is very typical when people download a Notion template and they try to work as the Notion template tells them to work. That is not really the way. Be aware of what's bothering you inside of the system. Let's say, I don't know, like I said before, you forget to mark a task as complete and this bothers you. Okay, so let's find out why. Don't just be oblivious to that friction or to that feeling and try to fix it because systems are iterated over and over. And finally, if after auditing your system, you want me to take a look and help you improve it, I'm gonna also leave in the description of this video a link to schedule a qualification session together where we will see if we can partner up to set up your business systems and automations. 
input. So that is it for this video. And as always, hasta la próxima.